I think what Mars Curiosity rover is doing is uh, answering one of the most important questions to humankind. Are we alone in this universe? Uh, we can never lose sight of, of how important it is to ask those questions as a civilization. We're ultimately searching for life on Mars, the possibility if there ever was life on another place in the universe besides Earth. And Curiosity takes us one step towards that by trying to figure out if Mars ever could have supported life. There are a few different places in our solar system where life could uh, have evolved other than Earth. Uh, Mars has always been a fascinating possibility because it's so close to Earth. The temperature ranges it experiences are, are similar to Earth. It often gets above the freezing point, making liquid water possible. We've gone there you know, so many times now and we'll continue to do so because it's uh, so much closer than the further moons that uh, may be other targets for uh, the possibility of life. I think maybe the most straightforward uh, model of life on Mars would be that it evolved uh, differently from Earth, that uh, Mars probably had conditions that were more friendly to life before Earth did even. And so if life took hold on Earth and spread so much, you know, why didn't it also do that on Mars? Another possibility that gets more interesting is that life was transferred from early Earth to early Mars or maybe early Mars to early Earth and, and that life is continually being spread around the solar system. Uh, as asteroids and, and comets and meteors uh, transfer uh, little particles from one planet to another. And of course the other possibility is sort of the, uh, the null hypothesis that, that life doesn't exist on Mars, that Mars is a sterile planet. And that's, you know, equally interesting scientifically, uh, but probably a little less exciting, uh, you know, for other reasons. We're going to an ancient site on Mars where there's a huge stack of layered rock in this mountain we call Mount Sharp that we've landed next to. And this mountain is the largest stack of layered rock we know of in the solar system. Geologists get really excited with layered rock because it's a record of time, uh, just like the Grand Canyon on Earth. So our plan uh, you know, has always been, after picking this landing site, to drive over to Mount Sharp and just start climbing up the foothills and take measurements layer by layer, determining from all the different instruments we have whether any of those time periods in early Mars history that are now trapped as you know, rocks at uh, Mount Sharp could have ever supported life. In the distant past, there's all this geologic evidence for rivers, maybe even lakes or oceans on Mars. And that is really a fascinating uh, thing to explore. This is a planet that's undergone a huge climate change, we think. You know, much more than the, the relatively small but important climate changes that are occurring on Earth today. We probably have gone on Mars from almost an Earth-like world with flowing water and streams and rivers and, and precipitation to something that's uh, planetary-wide, just a dry, barren desert. I think what's so exciting for the science team here is that so far, you know, after a few tens of days on the surface, it's still a young mission, uh, everything we've seen from our eyes on the surface of Mars has indicated that this landing site is, is exactly what we hoped for. After this mission, I hope Mars will no longer be an exotic place uh, to people. It won't be some alien planet like in the science fiction movies. It'll be an Earth-like planet. You know, we will be driving around environments that look just like deserts on Earth. And really that's the whole point. You know, the, Mars is our neighbor planet. It has the same geology, the same physics, the same atmospheric processes that occur on Earth. And if all that's so similar, you know, why isn't there life as well?